All right, so we're going to just jump in really quickly here to uh, some security engineering. How apropos to some of you for your homework assignment tonight. No names or initials. First topic we're going to jump into is one of my favorite. It's using application security techniques. So when we talk about security engineering, there's some certain things that come to life and we need to at least enumerate them to make sure that you understand. First thing is this thing called fuzzy. What is fuzzy? Anybody know? That's right. So garbage. I like to say, let's throw the kitchen sink at the application. That means that you try everything under the sun to see if the application breaks with the intent that if I'm trying to fuzz it, then I'm, I'm throwing any combination of things at it. I'm pushing this button. I'm putting in a bunch of bulk data here. I'm trying this. I'm trying that. I'm trying this. I'm trying that. I'm trying different things because I want to try to catch the error when I try things and hopefully land in a position where I have a privileged, privileged escalation. So one of the tools that you can use for this is uh, Peach Fuzz. It's a pretty good tool, Peach Fuzz. It's in the Kali Linux suite of tools, as well as some of the uh, the other uh, penetration testing, vulnerability assessment tools that are out there, open source. Um, another one is uh, Burp Suite. Burp Suite is pretty good for application security if you've not used that. Uh, there are free versions of Burp Suite out there, but even the uh, production version is like less than 300 bucks, so it's really good uh, if you've never used it. Um, so some of the different secure coding concepts are being able to have um, uh, error checking and event handling. And what does that mean right there? What does error checking and event handling mean? Well, just like the name implies, we said it over here already, we want to go ahead and program like your mom or your dad is going to be using the program. Because if some of the, uh, my mom, for instance, if she was using some of my programs, there's a 100% chance that she would find a way to break it. Right? So I have to kind of take off my, hey, this is going to be the only way that people are going to use this program, and then now think a little bit differently. Right? That's why a lot of times you see business analysts as people that are a little bit more long in the tube because we want to make sure that we try different combinations of things. A lot of times you'll find uh, the testers are younger or older and maybe have one in the middle just to get a combination of different ways that we can do it. But you try, you catch, hopefully you can get different uh, ways to catch the errors. The biggest issue, the biggest issue that we've had for the past five to seven years is input validation. Input validation leads to uh, uh, hopefully being able to catch buffer overflows. If we have time, maybe I'll try to do a little demo uh, tomorrow to show you a buffer overflow and the way that that works. But essentially, if you have a uh, let's say this is first name, a form on a website, this is first name, this is last name, and then you have a button. Let's say that, that this text box right here only allows 10 characters. And this uh, last word, last name only allows 10 characters. Well, what happens if I give it 11 characters? What happens if I give this one 11 characters? What happens if I give it 111 characters? Or what if I give it a thousand characters? What is it going to do? How is it going to react? And based off of that, what kind of input validation are you doing? Well, it's kind of a, uh, we call it a cat and mouse game, right? 
Because if you start to look for things like uh, regular expressions, or sometimes you see it in the business called regex, where you have regular expressions. Uh, if we were just looking for regular expressions, that could be any number zero through nine. It could be any letter lowercase a through z, any letter uppercase a through z would be a valid input for this. Now, what did I leave out of my regular expression check right here for the input validation? Special characters. So any special character would not be part of my input validation. So if I was doing an input validation on regular expressions, it would be looking to say each character, so if I have B, M, C, G, E, E, what it would do is the code, when I push the button, the code would say character one, character two, character three, character four, character five, character six. Each one of them would say character one, is it zero through nine? No. Is it lowercase a through z? No. Is it capital A through z? Yes. Okay, that passes the routine. Next. Capital M? No, no, yes, boom. So this would move along here. This would pass my regular expression check. Okay? But oftentimes, people put in bogus things and cause the system to react in a way that was not planned for. And because of that, we get these things like this down here, this cross-site scripting or SQL injection, which are two really big input validation issues that you see in the business. And we'll talk a little bit about this tomorrow again. You will absolutely 100% see SQL injection and cross-site scripting on the exam. On the exam, you'll see both of these right here. And we'll actually do an example of SQL injection and an example of cross-site scripting, scripting tomorrow. But rest assured that probably for the next four or five more years, the biggest issue is going to continue to be input validation because a lot of times customers want the websites or the apps as soon as possible. And as soon as you show them that it's working, what do they want you to do? Put it in production, right? Just like our the, the Cyberbus example earlier, right? When we have that, we want to make sure that we say, hey, wait a second, cowboy. We need to take a better look at this because we need to make sure that we're securing it. We bake security into it. When we bid projects, you have to bid projects with security built into it. You cannot bolt the solution on at the tail end of it.